safety officials are asking the public to be extra careful along the RPV coast and only to swim when a lifeguard is present. I'm Maria Soreo. In recent months, high surf conditions have resulted in beach closures after one man drowned off Inspiration Point. Lameda Sheriff Sergeant Dave Rosas talked with Liz Brown Swanson about the ongoing effort. The Sheriff's Department joined the Abalone Cove Task Force and it was requested by the task force to the city that they close the beaches. And the city obliged, they closed the beaches. They do have the authority to close the beach. During the Labor Day weekend, we saw waves here up to nine to 12 feet. And it was just incredible. Uh, being a lifetime resident here, I have never seen anything like that before. Uh, a lot of people were concerned about the washing machine, the area. Um, at the end of Inspiration Point, and that is extremely dangerous right now. Uh, lifeguards can't even get in there. Uh, during this past weekend, the beach was closed. We did cite nine people for not paying attention to the signs. Uh, if it says trail closed, beach closed, that means trail closed, beach closed. If I have to go down there and get you, you're going to get a $250 ticket. When the beach was closed over Labor Day weekend, during that period, I think lifeguards reported 16 rescue operations still despite the closures. What do you think about that? 16 rescues, of course, it was down for the uh, July 4th weekend in which we had unfortunately one death and uh, I think it was up to almost 60 rescues and now we're down to 16. People need to get the message. Uh, a lot of people think they're great swimmers. It doesn't matter if you're an Olympic swimmer or you're on a USC's national water polo team. There is no way you can deal with this ocean. I ask people, please pay attention to the tides. Please pay attention to the water. Uh, it is extremely dangerous out here. So how do we get a balance? How do we strike the fact the public wants to come here, they want to enjoy the beach, but we got to keep them safe? We have to keep them safe. We have to educate the public somehow. Uh, the Sheriff's Department, we are still going to maintain our presence up here. Uh, hopefully during the weekends, uh, our tra the command post trailer is going to be here. People can come up and talk to us. Uh, lifeguards will be in the water. Uh, hopefully city staff will be up here to help uh, educate the uh, public too. You know, if you're going to go on the water, make sure there's a lifeguard visible. Right here below us at Sacred Cove, there's no lifeguard. That is correct. The only lifeguard is at Abalone Cove and at uh, RPV Beach next to Trump or below Trump. Sacred Cove does not have a lifeguard. And uh, due to that fact, uh, that's why we position the command post up here because if people are allowed in the water, at least there's some type of first responders up here that can respond and get help to them. Hospitals are calling out for your help to donate blood. Donations have been at an all-time low, which prompted the Lameda Sheriff's Department to sponsor a blood drive. Local police, residents, and even the RPV staff participated. Uh, we normally host a blood drive every year. It's something we do annually at the station. It's been amazing. Uh, we've had several walk-ups, and we have over 20 signed-up appointments. So we've made our goal, and we hope to exceed it. The city of Rancho Palos Verdes has helped us out by helping us spread the word and several of their employees are signed up to donate today as well. We're trying to get um, as much as people as we can, especially for the O positive, that's the most common blood. So um, we're asking the community to please come and donate for today. It takes 30 to 45 minutes for the procedure. We first um, have them show us um, with a California ID. We have them sign in. We uh, give them a pamphlet. We have them read our stop signs. And from there, we'll take it on. Uh, you present ID and you sign up, and they uh, verify who you are. Then you go through another series or barrage of questions uh, to make sure that you uh, don't have any issues that you can be concerned with your blood. Uh, again, they verify your information, make sure you are who you present yourself to be. And uh, here we are. <laughs> I think I've been in for about a half hour so far. I volunteer with the Red Cross for for several months. It's important to have um, fresh blood for everyone that needs it. I'm I'm honored to be able to do this to to help out in any way I can to help other people. We can help save a life for kids with blood conditions and an elderly too.
anyone, anyone who's interested in donating blood for next year's drive, they can go to our station's website and you can get the information there and that will also send you to our social media accounts as well. Volunteers throughout California will participate in an effort to keep our beaches clean and beautiful. On Saturday, September 20th from 9 a.m. to noon at Abalone Cove, local volunteers will participate in the annual cleanup day. You're welcome to join in along with many volunteers from the Palos Verdes Land Conservancy and Los Serenos Day Point Vicente who will pick up trash and recyclables. Here's more from John Clayton. What a wonderful Southern California day to talk about one of the biggest challenges facing the public here in California. Trash on our beaches. We're here to talk to two individuals who know exactly what to do and how you, the public, can help. So come with me as we talk about cleaning up California's beaches. On uh, September 20th, it's a international event, a global event. It's the Coastal Cleanup and it's our part in the overall event is here at uh, Abalone Cove and RPV. It's a great event that we put on with our uh, docent group. They're, they're our main key partners. Uh, we also have, uh, it's, it's sponsored by Heal the Bay, and um, we also have the Land Conservancy. They play a large part in, in the event. And it's just an opportunity for uh, families, individuals, groups to come on down, help us out, spend a beautiful weekend, helping us keeping our, uh, our AAA rating that we're very proud of. So you mean fa families are going to come down here and have a good time and help clean up the beach? Help clean up the beach. What a great way to spend the, spend the weekend. Uh, help us clean up. We have, um, you know, the, the day basically looks uh, where, where we'll, we'll have people come out, clean up some trash, uh, help out with a little bit of graffiti, maybe a little bit of trail maintenance um, in and around the beach. Uh, but, um, you know, we, we have pristine uh, beaches here in RPV, and one of the ways we keep our AAA rating is, is uh, by events like this. Tell me a little bit and tell our viewers about some of the parts that docents play in this very important program. Well, a little about the docents of uh, Los Serenos. We are basically the teaching arm of Point Vincenti Interpretive Center. We do all the exhibits, we do all the training, we do all of the um, hikes and so forth. And this is one of our functions that uh, is basically required by all of our docents. We have over 100 docents. And this is what our, one of our things that we do, one of our big events along with uh, several others. So we set up uh, all the booths up on top where the, everybody is supposed to meet up at the parking lot. And we set up booths there for them to sign in, um, to get their supplies that they're supposed to get, um, and there will be some refreshments as well. Um, so we basically kind of organize the whole thing, along with the uh, Land Conservancy, as he said. They can sign up, but for the cleanup, they don't have to sign up. Um, they just show up with willing to work. I don't know, Dan, how much you know about this, but what sort of stuff are people finding on the beach? I mean, what, what are some of the things that are causing, causing the trash problems? What are people leaving on the beach? Right, so we, we have everything from your everyday uh, picnic goers that sometimes, you know, we have high winds that will blow oh. trash away. We have uh, plastic bags, um, sometimes bottles, wrappers. Um, you, you know, anytime you have a, a, a great amenity like this, like, like, like the beach, you're going you're gonna to have people that come on down and, and want to enjoy and partake. Uh, so sometimes things don't, don't get carried out and we, we try to have the leave no trace principles here at the beach where anything you bring in, pack it up and bring it out. Or, I love uh, that phrase, leave no trace. I right. love that. Right. So it's, it's just, um, you know, you, you get everything from uh, newspapers to wrappers to, uh, to, to bottles. So every little bit, you know, adds up. For more information on the California Coastal Cleanup Day, you can go to the RPV City website at palosverdes.com slash RPV. And when we come back, a local treasure has a new name. And what's going on at the Palos Verdes Library? You'll find out. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Deputy Chris Knox, here to remind you of the importance of traffic safety near our schools. School zones are always 25 miles per hour. The school zone only applies when students are outside the school in the morning and the afternoon. Parents should always allow extra time when dropping off their children and should know the school's drop-off routes and procedures. Motorists should also focus on safe driving near schools. Some of the violations I see near schools are cell phones, speeding, double parking, seat belts, and child safety seats. 
Students should always remember to cross safely at intersections and not to run out in front of cars. When we follow these rules, we can all stay safe. And a big congratulations goes out to the city of Palos Verdes Estates who celebrated their 75th anniversary, complete with a big bash at Malaga Cove. Here's more from the event. We are celebrating the anniversary of the city's incorporation in 1939, so 75 years ago. So today's uh, events, they're going to have the mariachis that are here. We had two uh, greeting everybody at the church uh, with the, uh, the shuttle bus, and then we have seven strolling around the plaza. And uh, we have uh, wonderful vendors, that the restaurants, they're all local, and they have given um, their taste of food today. Uh, as well as the, um, uh, we have a special beer that's being made in Torrance, and so it's called Absolution, and so we're featuring that. And then the wine man, uh, Jeremy Wilkinson, is giving us uh, wines from around the world. The cars, the classic cars, are have kind of been a, um, a, um, a very traditional presence at all of our events this year when they're celebrating because we're fortunate in this area to have people that are really into the classic car movement and wonderful car buffs and so we uh, asked them and they came you know so they were happy to show off their car yeah, so, so we're really happy that they were here too and it some of them aren't as old as the city but close <laughs> just want to see the public come and enjoy a special birthday, 75 years. We're not trying to make any kind of money. This isn't a charity. What we're really trying to do is just offer a celebration, and a celebration that continues throughout the year. It started in May, and it'll end at the end of October. Today is just one of those fun in the plaza. We have music, we have food and wine. Uh, when people were looking back to the 50th anniversary and the 60th anniversaries, they thought that the highlight events had been the events in the plaza. It, it is our signature. You look at Neptune Fountain, it's one of the things with which people identify our city. So to be able to close it down and have the celebration here is just really particularly special. Well, I, I could never leave here. It's just so beautiful. It's a jewel. I've been here 26 years and I moved here because it reminded me of where I used to live in the Midwest and there's a lot of trees, it's quiet, it's peaceful, it's close to the ocean. You don't feel like you're in Los Angeles. You can kind of get refreshed, it's, a, you know, it's, uh, it's calming. And then it's only five minutes to go down to where the action is in uh, Manhattan Beach, Hermosa Beach or you know, the Riviera. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. Well, uh, the other paid event that we have, which I think is going to be very special, uh, again at a historic site, the second site that was built in Palos Verdes Estates, is the golf club. And we'll be having a very elegant uh, diamond ball um, October 18th. And I think we're about half sold out on those tickets, and once again, the magic number is 300. So we're hoping that everyone will uh, get their tickets as soon as possible because that is a very limited number. Happy birthday, Palos Verdes Estates. The Norse Theater has added a new name to the marquee. Palos Verdes Performing Arts will now be the new name. I sat down with President and CEO Julie Bo Reynolds who tells me why it was time for a change. We had a group of people that really started with us and for the next you know 25 30 years they've been with us arm in arm fundraising and being a part of this beautiful place and then we found that a whole nother generation didn't come along and that's the generations between 30 and 60 really and so as we went out in the public and when I I think last year we hired a company Piper and Associates to help us hired us and they're doing it pro bono but they decided they would help us and try to figure out why do we have this gap and as we found out we did surveys we went out in the public and we found out the people that even have lived here for 50 years didn't know a where the Norris theater was what it did 
and they thought the Norrises owned the theater. And so, in addition, there's a Norris Center for the Forming Arts in um, Florida also. So we didn't have that uniqueness that said, this is a nonprofit, and we had to get that ownership. We had to get people to go, wow, this is a nonprofit. This is Palos Verdes Performing Arts. This is, this is in our backyard, and it's part of our community. And they didn't have that before. I mean, people would walk up to me and say, are you Mrs. Norris? <laughs> no. <laughs> would like to be no <laughs> she's a wonderful lady and she also was behind the name change she was lovely um, this past year and sat us down and we were talking about who who's going to take over bringing the large sums of money that come to this theater to support it because we raise about nine hundred thousand to a million every year to keep this place running That's right. and I said to her well I'm really good at operations, so I'm really going to streamline the operation and try to get new shows in and new groups to get a newer demographic up here. And she said, yeah, Julie, but we need to find out why people aren't, you know, jumping on the bandwagon like they did years ago. And that's why we went off and did this. And so why Palace Verdes Performing Arts? Well, we tried out a lot of different names. And um, we were like, well, why don't we just call it the Peninsula Performing Arts? Well, there's many peninsulas all across California, so that was out. And Piper's Associates said, you need to have a name that is something they can remember and something that gives you an identity of where you are and what you do. You know, it's that branding that you, people will know as soon as they look at the name, like the Cerritos Center. So that's, that's why we picked Palos Verdes Performing Arts, and we didn't do Palos Verdes Performing Arts Center because we didn't want to be confused with the Arts Center. Okay. So that's basically where we came about it. And so we had a, a big focus group. Not only did we use the um, uh, survey that we did and the groups that went out, but we also had the focus group with the executive board and the board members to come up with it. And it's a brand new season at Palos Verdes Performing Arts. Let's go to Caitlin Semko, who gives us a sneak peek. Hey, Maria, I'm here at the Norris Theater, where we caught up with artistic director Jim Grusing, who gave us a sneak peek at the upcoming season. Well, we have lots of exciting things planned. We've actually added a new series. We have two special events. The whole season opens on, uh, on September 13th with Michael Feinstein in concert. He's a world-renowned concert pianist. And then our three-play series features three wonderful shows, two musicals this year. The hit musical, The Full Monty, will start off the three-play season. Then we have a wonderful comedy called Love, Sex, and the IRS. And then we close out that three-play season uh, with Cats the Musical, which is very, very popular, as you know. We have two special events. Uh, the first special event of course is Michael Feinstein the second it will be held at the Norris Pavilion and that is the diary of Anne Frank uh, we're really excited about that we have our popular present series which we've been doing for many many years now that starts with Sweeney Todd in concert we have Sweeney Todd in concert we have uh, the best of doo-wop at Christmas we have the Rat Pack tribute the Las Vegas Rat Pack we're really excited about that and then we have um, a Grand Night for Broadway starring David Burnham and Christina Safford Ashford. And then the new series we've added this year is called PV Live, the series on the edge. And we've decided it's time to start nurturing some new theater goers, new concert goers here at the Norris Theater to Palos Verdes Performing Arts. So we started PV Live, the series on the edge. And uh, that's gonna start off in November with uh, Beginnings, a uh, tribute to the music of Chicago. We have Don't Stop Believin', a tribute to the music of Journey. Ed Alonzo, The Misfit of Magic, it's a night of magic and comedy, he's a comedian, magician, and then we have a night of stand-up comedy which will also be held at the Norris Pavilion. So lots of exciting things, lots of variety, lots of uh, really fun things for, for everybody. The PV Live series, um, we look at uh, audience demographics and basically across the country, the, the average age of a theater patron is, is 65 plus. And so we all know we want to nurture new theater goers. So we've started a committee called the PV Live Committee comprised of all men which is unheard of in theater. It's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a committee of men who meet and we, we look at many things, um, popularity of acts, um, the age of the people we want to, to cultivate. And like I said, uh, between the ages of 30 and 60 is ideally where we wanna, we wanna go with that series. So um, popular acts, we have a great headliner planned. I can't really announce it yet, but it's coming up for uh, the spring of 2015 and we're really excited about it. And when we come back, a very special resident is honored by the Rancho Palos Verdes City Council. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Hi, I'm Deputy Chris Knox, here to remind you of the importance of sharing the road. It's important to slow down when you see orange cones in the road. Many days, men and women are involved in road work, so always slow down, even below the speed limit, and be aware of the workers in the road. By following these rules, we can all share the road safely. This message is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes and the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. The Palos Verdes Library District has some exciting community events coming up. Liz Brown Swanson joins us from the Peninsula's main library with the story. Liz. Hi, Maria. I'm here at the Peninsula Center Library. I'm in the local history room where we're going to make some history here with the library district director, Kathy Gould, as she talks about all the wonderful events coming up right now. I should say two big ones the last weekend of September, Kathy. Why don't you highlight what's going on here? Sure. So the first one that we've got going on is One Book, One Peninsula. This is the sixth year we've done that. And the idea behind One Book is to try to engage the community and build a sense of community spirit by having everybody read and discuss the same, or as many people as possible, read and discuss the same book. Um, this year, um, we worked with our community partners who are the Land Conservancy, the Art Center, Marymount California University, and Sustainable PV Schools to select uh, The Nature Principle by Richard Louvre, which is about the importance of nature and the natural environment environment in um, well-being and health and how we may do ourselves a disservice when we disconnect too much from that environment and spend too much time connected to our devices so kind of a timely topic and uh, we have Mr. Louv coming to visit the peninsula that last weekend of September he'll be here on Friday the 26th speaking at an event at Marymount uh, California University at 1230 and that's open to the public and then that evening at uh, 5 p.m. we've got a private reception a fireside chat with Mr. Louvre at Terranea beautiful outdoor location with a fireplace and uh, people can come $50 a ticket and space is very limited we're only limited to 50 participants um, but we'll have drinks and hors d'oeuvres and an opportunity to hear from Mr. Louvre and meet him kind of up close and personal and then on Saturday the 27th at 2 o'clock he'll be speaking on the roof of the Peninsula Center Library and he'll be also having an opportunity to sign his books and we'll have our pop-up library, we'll have an art activity for the kids, we'll have booths by our community partners and some other community organizations so it should be a great afternoon. That will be busy weekend and of course back on the rooftop the very next day on September 28th you have your third annual local authors fair. Tell us about that. Sure. Um, again, back on the roof, we'd like to take advantage of the fact that we're renting the tent for the weekend. Uh, we've got um, nearly 60 authors who are coming this year. The local author fair um, is in its third year, and it really arose out of our desire to support and showcase the work of all of the talented authors that we have in our community, and there are a lot of them um, writing on all kinds of topics, kids' books, nonfiction, fiction, detective books, all, all kinds of topics. And uh, they'll be there, they'll have an opportunity to showcase their work, also to network with the community and with one another. And then we've got some great speakers talking about topics of interest to authors and aspiring authors. So on publishing and how to break into publishing and how to, how to uh, turn your idea into a book. And I think the community will really enjoy and appreciate that. And again, that's from 2 to 5 on September 28th. It's 2 to 5, September 28th on the roof of Peninsula Center Library. And again, we'll also have our pop-up library and an art activity for the kids. You are busy here. We appreciate all you're doing, and there's lots of things happening all the time here at the, through the library. You can check out and find out more by going on the website at pvld.org. Kathy Gould, thank you for being with us. Now back to you, Maria, at the studio. The Rancho Palos Verdes City Council honored a very special resident who is a decorated war hero. Captain Westcott survived having his B-17 airplane shot down during World War II. Here's more from John Clayton, who sat down with Mayor Jerry Dehovic and Captain Wes Koss. We're talking with the Mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes, Mayor Jerry Dehovic, and I know in a few moments we're going to be honoring uh, you and the city of RPV are going to be honoring a World War II veteran, Captain Wes Koss, a B-17 pilot in World War II. He was part of what's come to be known as the greatest generation. What do you? What, what is your thoughts about that era? You know that uh, that term I think was uh, coined by Tom Brokaw, uh, but I concur 100%. I think most people do. It is 100% fitting and appropriate. If you look back, and I'm a, I'm a student of history, and if you look back at what that generation did, what they stood up and defended, what they stood up against. Why is that so important? 
Well, you know, it's it's. We, I guess every current generation always questions the younger generation. But I look back fondly at at what their what their ethics were, what they stood for, their patriotism. You had people, you know, 18 years and younger signing up to defend America, defend the ideals of America, and and believed in American exceptionalism. Which, unfortunately, I think a lot of that has gone away today. Tell me some of your thoughts about uh, getting this recognition all these years later. Well, uh, of course it was a surprise. Uh, we all felt uh, during World War II and, and after that uh, when we were called to do our duty, we did. And we didn't uh, ask why, we just did it. But. Uh, about uh, how I feel now, I'm uh, grateful. I feel that, uh, uh, thank God I've lived long enough that uh, there's a few of us left and, uh, and uh, the community uh, has uh, given me the honor tonight to recognize me this situation. I appreciate it very much. I guess the last observation, uh, Wes, is that many people consider people of your caliber the greatest generation. How do you view that yourself? <laughs> I think that all generations, if they had had the call that we had, would be the greatest generation. It was a war that we all uh, were united in that it needed to be won, and um, uh, we took it in stride. Well, I think that uh, the people of RPV, by and large, uh, cherish our veterans and, and those that currently fight for us and those in the past, but this is a, this is a generation that is, uh, unfortunately, like we said, on a daily basis, we're, we're losing close to 600 of them. And, with each passing, we're losing the stories of bravery and courage and, and just the sacrifice that went, uh, uh, that went along with this generation. So I'm, I'm hoping this becomes a trend. We have two more in the pipeline that I'm very excited about. I would encourage uh, anybody who has a relative or a friend that uh, wishes uh, us to recognize them, I would love to do it. And I hope this is a trend because, again, in, in very short order, they won't be with us and they should be recognized for all they did. They, they kept America, America. Last observation, do you think if I put you in a B-17 right now, you could fly that baby? No question. <laughs> Thank you, Wes, very much. And if you would like to learn more about Captain Koss, you can tune into Armchair Traveler, which airs every day at 8.30 p.m. on RPV TV. And finally, although the waters have been rough, that did not stop a women's relay team who swam from Catalina Island to Terranea. These 50-year-old plus women broke the record in their age group for making the 20-mile crossing in just over 9 hours and 8 minutes. I'm an official observer with the Catalina Channel oh, Swimming oh, Federation. Wow, wow. They're the organization that sanctions swims across the Catalina Channel here, both solo and uh, uh, relays. Here. Here I had a group of ladies, they're all friends uh, from the San Diego area. and. Uh, a few of them have actually swum solo across the Catalina Channel. Uh, two of the uh, ladies here have swum, uh, done solo swims. And they wanted to do a relay swim in honor of, uh, actually a couple, a couple of them, their mothers did a relay swim in their 50s and set a record and then set another record in their 60s. So these gals are all in their 50s. And uh, they're called the, the WOW women. That's wild old women. <laughs> all right, and they're wild old women too named after the original relay called Wild Old, Old Women 1. And they just set a record today. The uh, former record was 9 hours and 19 minutes, and uh, they came in at 9.08, so they now have the new record. Congratulations to these very inspiring women, and you know what they say, 50 is the new 40. And that will do it for us. From everyone here at RPV-TV, make it a great day.